In this video, traders, let's talk about being a frustrated trader. Stick around. Hey guys, very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate all your support, subscriptions, comments, likes, shares, and all that other good stuff. I do not take it for granted, and I thank you for you spending your valuable time uh, watching this video. Appreciate you helping to grow the channel as well. Okay, enough of that. Let's get straight to the juice. Frustrated trader. Guys, trading can be super frustrating. I want to tell you a very quick story about a trade that I took literally is yesterday, two days ago, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday I took this trade and it was frustrating, right? There was a, a catalog of events that was frustrating, but actually in the moment I thought, yeah, I'm frustrated and I'll, I'll tell you what I kind of did with it. But the, 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 the point of this video, guys, is to tell you this, is that if you're frustrated in trading, that's normal. But as you start to get more experienced, it's not like you become some kind of superhuman, I don't feel emotions to your trades. No, you, you do. But the difference is, is that it's at a lower level, you put it into perspective, and most importantly, you don't react to it by doing some damage to your trading account. Because the trader in me 15 years ago would have been frustrated and would have traded and would have overtraded and would have just dived in and would have to want to get back and not missed it and done this and done that and then fought the next day and just trade out of anger and frustration, emotion, and probably ended up screwing up the account, you know, or at least doing some significant damage to the account that then came back with methodical trading, plod, 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 back, 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 and then the cycle would repeat. So, if, you know, that's that was my cycle in my very very early years, good trading, good trading, good trading, good trading, boom, good trading, good trading, good trading, good trading, boom, and it was going on and on and on. It's only when I looked myself in the mirror and said, "Hey, I've got to sort out this boom bit that I can progress." So I must focus just on that. And in fact, we talk about that loads of times. I've done a video on that. But focus on the one thing that's doing you the damage. Forget about everything else. And that for dumb bit, I don't know why I keep saying for dumb, but you know the bit I mean on the equity curve where you're up and then you take that big drop down. That's the bit to focus on. Anyway, let's get back on track. Frustrated trading. So quick rundown of this trade. Open, Dow. We look like we're moving lower. I did my analysis, thought fine. It looks like the overnight session's at lows, blah, 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 et cetera. I don't need to go through the, the, the whys and wherefores. The point is, I had a price target. I like to kind of reverse engineer sometimes my trade based on where I feel the market's gonna go and then reverse engineer a way to get into the trade, depending on the conditions and such. But that's not the topic of the video. Anyway, the point is, there's my target. Market opens. So I want to get short at some point, but I still have a thing, a, a, a kind of thought in my mind that we might pop up off the open and that might give me the opportunity to short. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, hey, pop up, f uh, fails, struggles, comes back, maybe short it back through the open, maybe short a double top, maybe short an exhaustion to highs, play that kind of game. That was my thinking. We didn't get that. We started to do this at the open. So there goes the bell and we just started to fall through the floor like this, do, 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 do. Stair stepping, stair stepping, stair stepping. And in my mind, I can see the juice of the trade going lower and lower and lower. And juice meaning this is my profit target. So now I've only got this. So now the chances of me getting on something good and structuring it so it's a decent risk reward ratio is getting lower and lower and lower and lower. I'm right. I've analyzed the market correctly. I've seen it. I've, I've, you know, I've called it, if I want of a better word, but I'm not positioned. You know, it's not done the first little thing I wanted to get me sure. So I'm watching this, I'm watching this, I'm watching this. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm having this internal dialogue saying, listen, it's going to hit that target, right? It's going to hit that target. The likelihood is very high now. Everything had wrapped up before this, the price action now is looking like it's going to do that. Get yourself sure. And, and we, we have this dialogue and it's the frustrated dialogue of, you're gonna miss it, you're gonna miss out. Look at that, the profit, the profit's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's hardly gonna be worth it now. You've done all the effort, but I'm like having this little internal dialogue inside you but the difference is that you can step back and go, you know what, if I miss it, I miss it. That's the way it is. I'm not going to dive into this and see it snap back on me, stop me out, and then go lower. Right, so I reevaluate and I say, okay, what's a fair way to get involved in this? Right, well, if we pull back 
and then we stall and then we start to roll. I'll take a short on that. I'll put a stop above the pullback. It's got good momentum. First pullback trade is very effective in this type of environment. Good opening drive. There's your target. Cover it at target. That'll work well. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting. So I've reframed everything and I've given myself a goal to look for. I've said, okay, look for that. Trade that. And then I've said to myself, okay, but if I don't get the pullback, the second trade idea is a flush through those lows. Now for a flush, I need a big candle, I need to see tick extension, forget about the operational things, that's what I'm looking for. I thought, okay, fine. So now, now I put myself in, a, in, a, in an area of peace. You know, I'm at peace with things. And yes, I'm still, would I have liked to have got short that on a full size clip at the open and taken that full thing very, very quickly? Of course, it's the most beautiful trade you can have as a day trader. Market opens, you're short, full risk, just goes lower and lower and lower, grinds lower, tag your target. It doesn't get any better than that. And so of course I would have liked to have been on that. And is there a sense of frustration? Yes. But the response to that is what you have to kind of improve. And you know, we're improving all the time, but something that's definitely you know, improved from me from 15, 16, 17 years ago is the response to this and say, okay, hey, listen, it's not happening, so what's the next move? What's your next play? Rather than being responsive to the emotion, it's, okay, fine, what's the next? And, and as it happened, we did get a little pop off this area. I managed to get short, and it was a lovely entry. It was, I couldn't have asked for more. I couldn't have asked for more if it, was the per if it was perfect from that scenario. And then we rolled over, fine. I ended up scaling a little bit as we went down and ended up taking the full out on that target. Fine, happy with that, absolutely perfect. Now, okay, now I'm saying okay, and I'm, am I still thinking about the fact that I could have made so much more on that? A little bit, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a human being, I'm still slightly thinking of that. It's not bothering me, it's not concerning me, but it's still there, it's fresh, it was only 20 minutes ago. Of course it's gonna be still fresh. So I now frame the second idea, which is buy on this exhaustion, okay? Now what actually happened is, we can get rid of all this. I don't normally make a, reach my finger, but I'm gonna to have to this time because the market actually went lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, okay? Now, I've got specific rules for trading exhaustion, so I'm not the type of person who just stands in front of that. I need to see an exhaustion move, and exhaustion for me done. Big candle, big flush, big volume, and I like to use tick index as well if I'm trading the Dow, fine. I see that, I wait for it, and I'm pleased with my patience. I'm pleased with the fact that I sat there through this and is the trade still valid? Yeah, it's still valid. I still think the big extension, I've changed my mind slightly as to my target. If we did it a little bit earlier, I might have a target back at the open. I might think it's just an opening range flush, but actually now we've gone a lot lower, I've changed. I think pull back to VWAP at best. So I just try to change the way I want to trade it. I don't change what I'm looking for. I just adjust my targets and my entries to suit the kind of structure that's being presented to me at the time rather than forcing my opinion on it. So by the by, came down, we had a flush, great. Pulled the trigger on the flush, got in. Uh, fine, it seemed like a good flush. But here's what happened, okay? It popped up a little bit. That's, that's not abnormal. But now, time is of the essence. If you're buying a flush, you want to see that thing just pop straight off because the, the definition of flush is it's kind of a bit of a liquidity vacuum. It's the last seller sort of vomiting out the position, if you like, um, and you expect a quick pop back up. So we've got this, but then here's what happened. You know, when I'm fully expect, well, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm hoping, uh, and this is what I'm trading, this is the idea. We pop back up and, you know, I'll come out. I think the VWAP was kind of a line here. That was probably, it's slightly out of scale. This is a VWAP was sort of like here, if you like. So it wasn't gonna be full the way back to this level I was working off before, but it was gonna be a reasonable trade. I could structure it okay, risk reward ratio is fine. Wait for the flush, good patience, all good. Tick, 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 fine. Um, stop under that low, excellent. So it started to sit there. And here's what was happening. And this, this, is, this is the real key, guys, because this thing was testing me again and again and again. Testing me there. Kept cool, kept calm, waiting for the trade. Pull the trigger, took the trade. Testing me again by lower, lower, lower. Now it started to test me again. It was sitting there, just doing that. Just sitting right at those lows. And I've got these two voices in my mind. One is saying, you've bought a flush, this hasn't popped, dump it. The other is saying, give it time, it's very, very weak, it might not pop straight away. Dump it, might not pop straight away, blah, blah, blah. And you have to take charge of these voices and say, okay, let me step back, let me review, and let me look and see exactly 
what the trade idea was, why I took the trade, and what I should do with the trade. Now, I ultimately decided that this guy here, <laughs> the black pen, was correct. I took this on a flush, and holding at lows is not a positive sign. It's almost bear flagging. If it wasn't so extended, it's almost bear flagging at lows. Do I want it? No, I don't. And so all this time I'm sitting through this and it's ping pong back and forth and I'm waiting. I'm like, okay, not really popped off. It looks okay. It's a, yeah, the longer it goes on, the more I don't like it. And so what happens is I, I, I close the position, I scratch with meaningless position of profit, slight little profit, and it rocked lower. And this is what's interesting. It rocked lower as I thought it might, but then it just kind of chugged up for the rest of the day took out my price target and actually ultimately came up to there. And so tested again and again and again, tested on this, tested by dumping it. Now I know actually in hindsight, I would have been stopped because my stop was there. But the point was, I'd still felt frustrated that I called this level not as accurately as I'd liked. And perhaps, you know, if I wasn't trading a flush, I wouldn't have such a tight stop there. If it was, in, you know, this is, this is the reality of it, guys. If I hadn't traded that flush, when we push through again at a later date and then push back up, I'd have structured a wider trade and said, okay, wider stop below the second low, long here, looking for a rotation back to the VWAP or a midpoint or something like that. Nothing crazy actually did end up going back up to highs, but I wouldn't have held it for that. I would look for a midpoint trade only. And you know the idea was, was right. And so I was kind of wrong by taking the flush. I was right by taking the, the exit on the flush. It didn't, it didn't go straight away. I was right with the idea and level. I mean, I was off by, you know, not much considering the range of the day. And so, you know, and then the early thing, so you can let this frustrate, and it was a profitable day, right? It wasn't huge, it was a profitable day that was mainly made up of this, of this kind of pullback to, to that level trade. But the point is, is that years ago, this would have been a trade that this would, day would have smashed me. It would have absolutely smashed me because I've been frustrated with that. I'd have probably gone short of lows and got pinged out. I'd have probably just blindly gone long here and got stretched out here. I'd have probably gone long again, got uh, stopped out here. I'd have probably ended up buying, maybe getting a bit here. Probably think I I'd have been well out of sync with it. I've just done stupid damage. All because you let frustration get the better of you. So moral of the story, guys, is if you're a frustrated trader, Try to step back and just see and put things into perspective. That's something that happens with comes with experience. You go, this is one trade out of thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of trades, whatever the number is, it's irrelevant. But it will be relevant if you let it be relevant, i.e. if you let it do damage, it can do damage. So whatever the pressure is for you, this is just kind of example that is recently in my mind and recently traded, but you've got something that maybe recently has pushed your buttons, it's made you frustrated, even angry, and you've responded to that in a negative way. So your task is now to say, okay, the market will frustrate me, the market's gonna frustrate me in 20 years time, in 30 years time, 10 years time, whenever you are at, but how I respond, I can fix how I respond to that right now so that I can be weathered and prepared for when the market does the things that frustrate me the most, because it's going to. And if you can get confidence with the fact that you can feel the frustration, but you're not going to act on it, you're still going to stay cool and calm. Now, the first stage of this, if you like, is to feel the frustration, walk away. You know, when I was there years ago, not right back at the beginning, but kind of when I'm working on this thing, I felt the frustration, walk away. You know, but then when you get experience, you can hold it, push it, say, fine, understand, frustrated, what's the next trade? Still recognize it's there, but it's not enough to, to cloud your judgment. That's where you want to be, but you need to kind of take steps to get there. But the first step is to not let the frustration get the better of you, because if it gets the better of you, it does significant damage to the account, or it can do. And so whatever that is for you that creates frustration, be aware of it and do not let it take charge of your trades. You take charge of your trades. You take charge of when you're risking putting capital at risk. Accept the emotion, we can't squash the emotion, acknowledge it, see if it's gonna affect your next trades. If you can trade without being affected by that emotion, do it. If you can't, walk away. Capital preservation, staying in the game, and not doing the damage. All right, guys, take care. I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for your support, bye-bye.